What's up guys? Haven't made a video in a pretty long time. Um, I've had a lot of stuff going on between work, uh, personal life, and just finding time to work in the car. Um, there's a lot of things that I've gotten done since the last video. Um, a lot of the things were I fixed the rust in the engine bay, which I'll show you now. It took a very long time to fix. I'll probably try to post some before and after pictures, um, but there was a spot here, a spot under there, under this harness, there was one there, there was one there, and then the biggest one here. So that's all done. Um, I ended up just cutting the rust out um, to a decent shape so I can weld in the metal replacement. Um, welded that in, grinded all the welds down, um, made it nice and smooth, put body filler over every single spot, um, smoothed it all down and primed it just to see what it looked like and it looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with the final product. So that took a very long time. That was a lot of man hours and I'm unfamiliar with body work. So for me, I just didn't feel like filming it um, just because I feel like it would take up a lot of time, um, a lot of space just recording it and just trying to filter out you know stuff and it'd be pretty boring in my sense uh, but that's all done i just lightly scuffed up the engine bay too nothing crazy um the next big thing was the radiator support so that's actually welded in now it's solid um it's sh pretty straight um checked it with the level and it's pretty solid um so that's all welded in and ready to go so that was another big step um, and today actually, well actually last weekend, I cut the radiator support to fit the Chase Bay's tucked radiator, which you can see here, had the cut here, had the cut here, so it slides in. Um, the radiator ends up hitting, well actually not hitting, but it's like very close to this upper portion where the hood latch bolts to on the inside. So it's pretty much as far as it can go up. Now. If I wanted to, I could cut more of this, but then it'd be on a tilt and it'd just be really weird. So I checked it with the level today and we're looking pretty good, about a degree. Um, a degree is what we're sitting at, um, front to back. So it's got a little bit of a lean, I think, to the front. Um, not a big deal though. Um, and then actually today what I did was I made some brackets um, since the S14, like I said, I don't know if it's a difference in core support, I think that's what it is, but the S13s, this you can actually get to sit on the opposite side of the core support, and then you just, you know, put like a nut cert and a bolt. Um, mine didn't. This is pretty much as far as it can go in without me chopping more stuff out, and I really don't want to. So what I did was I got brackets, I made a bend, um, pretty much had the bracket going up here, made a bend going out to the core support, and then going up. So I bolted it in, it's pretty solid. Um, I just have to trim off the excess bracket that I don't need, um, and then we'll be good to go. So that's that with the actual rad. And also these are the Mishimoto race fans. I don't think, I have a feeling I'm not gonna be able to run them um, just because the RB is so long. I did some measurements and measured the RB where it would sit in the engine bay versus how much these fans stick out. And I put a mark here and I think I'm gonna have like, um, I think the RB sticks out like an inch, an inch into the fans. So I'll have to possibly ditch these. I hope I don't have to, but I think I'm gonna have to switch them and I can just buy the Mishimoto Slimline fans. Um, they're just a regular 12 inch. That's what I had on the last, the last car and they did just fine. So they'll fit, they pull a lot of air and they'll do just fine, so that'll be that. Um, and then real quick, over to the engine itself, we did a lot on that. Um, there's been a lot that's been done. So I think the last video, we actually ended up painting the upper, the upper exhaust manifold. So painted that, I got everybody back on. Um, I bolt checked every single, every single bolt, every single AN fitting. Uh, as you can see, I just marked it with the yellow paint marker to know that I've touched the bolt and it's tight, torqued down. Um, 
So that's all tight. And then the, the oil drain, I did not wrap. Um, I didn't feel a need to because it's such a short line. There's, I mean, it's not gonna really do much. So I wrapped the coolant in and out. As you can see, this is a DEI uh, heat wrap. That's actually not wrap, it's a heat sleeve, I should say. So I wrapped those and also the, this guy here, that's my oil feed. Cause that's the most important one cause it just slips right in between there. So I wrapped those with the DEI heat sleeve and the heat tape at the ends to lock it off. And that, and this coolant line runs all the way to the back. Got it sitting here with the rubber clamp and over here. So that's the exhaust side and that was all done. And then what we did with the intake side, um, actually, let me show you here. We ditched the oil warmer, which is right here. This whole spider web mess. Ditch that. Let's see if we can see under here. And we got a, this is a Ross Performance um, oil block adapter. So these are two dash 12 lines. We'll have that going out to our Gretti oil filter relocation. All right, so we'll, we'll have that going to there. And obviously you have two lines that will go to an oil cooler. So I'll have to run lines from that to the oil cooler, blah, blah, blah. So since we ditched that, I had to look up some stuff and get creative. So what I ended up doing was those coolant lines from the old oil warmer, um, they kind of spider webbed into like a, a lot of things. So what I did was, I found this coolant hose. It's actually for like an LS swap. Um, I found it online and it's got a nice 90 degree bend and it's long and it actually fits perfect from this end to this end. So I ended up just routing it right up here. It eliminates all those crazy hoses it had and I blocked it off here and it's got a block off right up there if you can see it right here. So those are those two are blocked off and this should actually work a lot better. And then I also have a, and actually this is the same hose, just a little bit bigger for the um, uh, AAC valve. And that'll just go to the intake. Obviously, so when the throttle's closed, you got some air coming in. So that's all ready to go. Um, intake's bolted down, obviously has a new gasket and such. Um, and then we move on to the front here and we just had a little bit um, I did a little bit to this I ended up putting um, I got a new timing belt I uh, the old one was uh, nothing wrong with it really I just wanted to start with a new one again I like new stuff and then we did a PRP platinum racing products purple cam angle sensor bracket cleans it up a lot I like it um, and then we also did a Ross Performance um, harmonic balancer. This unit's actually really nice. Um, reason being, it's, it comes integrated, if you can see, with a 12 tooth trigger. So in the future, if I wanna go standalone, all I have to do is buy their bracket with the sensor, which this bracket goes somewhere over here. You know, put a sensor right there and you know, I'll have a, uh, a crank signal. I'll do that crank signal and then I'll get a, probably the Platinum Racing Products um, <clears throat> Cherry Hall effect sensor because we'll get rid of this big ugly unit and it'll just bolt right in a lot slimmer. It'll be better than that because these are prone to failure. Um, yeah, but that'll be in the future. And obviously I'm happy because the S13, I never ran power steering, even though I had the pump and all that. Um, so I have that. And that is everything for the engine. That's pretty much every everything I can cover up to date, you know? So you're caught up to date now. Um, we're definitely making progress very slowly, but it's, I have a feeling this will be done faster than I expected. Um, the big thing, the biggest things were done. Um, the rust was fixed. The core support was welded on. Now the radiator is fitted up. Um, so that's all good to go. Um, next thing is I have to get this harness, which I might tackle tomorrow. I'm going to take the harness out, mark everything, feed it through that hole in the body. 
and then that's going to go all the way around inside and the next thing i'll have to do is take the dash off because i'll have to route the harness inside the car along the dash bar where i want it um, so i'll probably end up cutting the loom cutting the loom um, I'll have to look at a wiring diagram to see which wires I don't need, such as um, any AC control wires. Um, there's actually actually not that much I need to really cut off, but yeah, I'll end up doing that. Um, making it nice and neat. There actually is some, I'll show you, there's some wires I do have to fix. Um, this is just from the previous owner, obviously, because I never drove it. It's very you can't even see it, but long story short, there's wires here that are exposed. They're broken. Um, just from the, the wheels that he had on it were rubbing, so I'll fix that up. Um, yeah, so that's everything right now. That's the next step is the harness, so we'll end up doing that pretty soon. Um, thanks for listening. Um, it's been a while since we made a video, so it feels good just to kind of get everybody caught up and that I'm over the big stuff now. Um, everything else should be, you know, slow progress, but it'll get done pretty fast because I've done it before. So, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Stay tuned for the next video, guys.